Hi, my name is Maya Copeland. Hello, my name is Kai Basin. And we are a part of the 2017 Greenberg Town Hall Internship. And today our focus is on discussing our topic, which is about high school students and their transition into the college world and the opportunities that they take and how it best fits them for the workforce. And today our special guest is Mr. Hugh McCauley. <laughs> and so what's What's a little bit about your, about your background? Uh, hi, my name is Hugh, and uh, I started as, uh, I guess to describe my life, I, I came out of high school as a licensed commercial airline mechanic. I was a mechanic, aircraft mechanic in the Navy, and uh, I had the opportunity to learn about computers at a very young age, <laughs> and before people knew what computers were. And uh, from the Navy, I, I actually went to work for IBM. And I was with IBM when we created the first desktop PCs. And I know that kind of ages me quite a bit, but um, the, the storage capacity in the average cell phone today would be equal to about 1,000 of those initial PCs that were deployed. Um, by a stroke of chance, a couple of years later, I wound up working for the U.S. Postal Service. I was a young electronic technician and uh, went to work for the Postal Service back in early 80s and they were transitioning their equipment from uh, analog equipment and sorting machines into digital computer driven machines it was a match and as I worked my way through the postal service uh, I, I took advantage of all the opportunities that the postal service and the federal government had to offer and I wound up a senior manager and at times I could have up to 2600 employees and I was responsible for getting the mail to and from all the letter carriers between New York City, Albany, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania. And uh, it, it was a pretty good task. And, and the thing that I enjoyed the most was the diverse workforce that we had and the, the, the immense opportunity just to have fun and enjoy life every day. And so that's a little bit about me. Wow, you've had such an eventful life. Yeah. Very successful. So tell us a little bit more about your high school experience. Like, how was it back then? Well, my high school experience was kind of uh, unique in that um, I went to a trade school. And back in the uh, 60s and 70s, several trade schools were established in New York City. Some of those trade schools were for building trades, secretarial trades, plumbing. And they provided students with an on-hand experience. Mm -hmm. Myself, I went to a school, Aviation High School, and aviation focused exclusively on aircraft licensed mechanics. And uh, at that time, it was not co-ed, and the industry was, was mostly men as far as working on aircraft. Mm -hmm. And that's all changed for the good. But I, I came out of high school, and it, it set the foundation because it was a, a really good balance of academics and hands-on and I think that's the real key. Okay, so. I just want to know a little bit more about um, what, who you wanted to be as a child like growing up and like your aspirations and like certain people you looked up to. Well I, I guess when I was growing up I, I certainly looked up to my dad and I thought my dad was one of the greatest people I've met. He, he, he was very very uh, energized and had a lot of enthusiasm and lived life to its fullest. He also brought with him a love of family, a need for education, and he was the one that recognized that my college career was not going to be stellar. And he kind of guided me into that aviation field. And with that, in the seventh grade, he did that. And it kind of set the foundation for my entire life. So I, I think if I had to look up to one person, it would be him. Oh, family is definitely Family's important. important. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so transitioning from high school to college, how, how was that? Was it hard? Was it? Well, I, at that point in my life, I didn't go to college. I actually transitioned. I was, um, I, as I said, I came out of high school as a commercial airline mechanic. Right. And uh, at that time, Vietnam War was going on, and a lot of people get drafted. So, you know, I had a pretty good opportunities that I could have taken up with the air, commercial airlines at that time. But um, with the, the draft and everything, I, I wanted to go into the Navy. I thought that was a pretty good place to be. The career opportunities were great. And so I was able, to, just like a college, looking at the opportunities and the things I wanted to do, I really enjoyed working on aircraft. And the Navy offered that 
schooling and the education that went with that that married up really nice with what I wanted to do. So taking my high school career and melding that into a college or equivalent training programs in the Navy, you know, it worked out very well for me. But having that vision to see what I wanted to do down the road was great. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have one more question, and that will be my last question. Okay. But um, my question to you is, if you have any advice for people growing up, whether that is high school students or college students, do you have any advice to give to them on what fields they should particularly like drive towards or follow their passions and that sort of stuff? Well, I, I think it's important to, to have a combination when you're looking at what you want to do. You know, it's, we ask people at a very young age, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? What job do you want? And you know, most of us can't decide what's our favorite food for the rest of our life. Yeah. If I said to yeah. you, you know, what would you like to eat every Tuesday for the next 30 years? You know, people would cringe at that. So what I would say is that, you know, try and build your skill sets so that for the first couple of years, that transition period, you're building good skill sets unless you really know what you want to do. And if you do, then you want to build a nice steady growth pattern that you can really enjoy and take those skill sets and never stop growing because we always learn we always continue to learn so i would say look at a vision you know don't lock yourself in but you know try and explore and take time to enjoy thank you thank you so we talked about uh your high school experience and the transition into from high school into the navy so can you tell us about some of the skills uh, required for you to use during high school and college to get into the workforce? Um, I, I think that for myself, uh, developing skills, uh, transitioning skills, as I like to call them, are really important. Uh, communication skills, uh, going into a workplace or an environment willing to learn. Uh, one of the, the best pieces of advice that I got from someone is that the Postal Service had been in existence for 240 years before I got there. And so they were doing just fine. And so my job was to learn as much as I could from the people that were already there. So that openness, that willingness to learn, communication skills, not only being able to communicate what I thought was important, but being able to listen constantly listen to the people that have been doing the job before me and the last part about it is is that commitment to to kind of being the best I could every day I know that that sounds like you know uh, this phrase that we steal from the army sometimes be all you can be or the Marines but it really is you know that work ethic that gets people to that can do attitude everything can be done you know there's limitations on, on finances and but everything can be done so communications willingness to learn from others and the willingness to try different things and, and just keep pressing ahead. Um, well, you did go to the Navy right after high school. Mm -hmm. Going from the Navy to the Postal Service, what sort of adjustments did you have to make to go from such a different perspective on the world from the Navy to an everyday job like the Postal Service? Well, um, I, I, there was many, I think there were more similarities then there were differences. Um, the Postal Service at that time, I was a, a processing, in a processing facility. And so everything was structured. The time people came, the time people left, the people went to lunch, um, the days off. And that environment that I had, so it was almost like my Navy career had set me in place to flow into a structured environment. And that structure that I learned in the Navy, um, you know, I was a young high school guy and, and you know, not really structured too much. And I got to class and I learned and I submitted my papers. But, you know, when I got into the Navy, I had that structured routine. And when I took that into the Postal Service, it enabled me to blend into their structure a lot better, a lot easier. And the transition was a lot easier for me than I think a lot of other people. And do you think, talking about a college student going into the workforce, would you recommend they use a structured approach similar to what you did with the Navy and the Postal Service to manage their life and their life after college? I think so. I think that um, transitioning from a college career into the workforce, I, I, you know, I used to teach at Oklahoma University. I was a, a 
kind of ad hunk professor out there. And, uh, you know, I, I used to tell people, you, you have all of the, this classroom knowledge, and it's sitting in your brain, and we want to really just maximize that. But we have to start connecting that with life experience. And it's when you take that learned knowledge and you connect it with life experience, the faster you can do that is the faster you'll become successful at whatever you want to do. And, you know, the internship program that you're part of today is kind of accelerating that learning life experience, not deferring it to the end of a four-year program, but starting it early so you're melding the classroom experience with life experience as you go along. And taking that into the workforce, a successful manager, in my opinion, is not a manager that knows everything. A successful manager is a manager that finds people that know things. And so if I can gather people with classroom experience, learned experience, and combine that with life experience, and I can build a team, that's a great successful team. Can you talk to us about networking and some of the relationships you made during your, your time in the Navy and, and the U.S. Postal Service and how that furthered your career? Networking is probably the most critical part of managing large organizations. When you're managing 26, 2,700 employees at a time, or you know, my job was to make sure that 7,000 letter carriers got their mail on time in the morning and in the evening, we picked that mail up from them. The worst thing to do is reinvent the wheel every day at work. It is time consuming and uh, with an organization as big as the Postal Service, everything has been done and tried before. And so by networking and start spending hundreds of hours trying to resolve a problem, you can go online, especially in today's environment, put out a post to people within your network, um, within your own subject matter experts. If you're an HR manager or a production control manager, send an email out. And I found that almost no problem that we encountered was unique. Someone else had had it and someone found a successful solution. People also will tell you what they tried and did not work. So instead of spending hundreds of man hours trying to figure something out, you send an email back, you get hundreds of responses, you filter them down real quick, and you have a solution to a problem in a couple hours worth of man hours. And that's the greatest thing, that networking is so important. I used to teach a senior management class, and I told people that the primary purpose of that class was for people, again, to come in and share their experience with each other. If they share their experience and contact each other throughout that, that program, they would always be successful managers. So you've supervised hundreds of people over the years. What would you say are some specific skills that young people entering the workforce should acquire? Well, I, I think that uh, not only young people, but anyone entering the workforce should have a couple of key skills just going in. Number one, I think communication skills. You have to be able to communicate with, with your point of view and understand the, the, the uh, information that's handed to you. The second thing is as you grow, you know, maybe taking on some form of leadership role, hmm. right? Leadership is, is a cool a tool that everyone wants, but very few people have. Everybody wants to be a boss. Nobody wants to be a manager. And so that, that's it. And the last concept that, that is lost a lot of times is teamwork. You have to be prepared to go in and join a team of workers to make it successful. No organization can go and, and, and do wonderful with just individuals. So teamwork, communications, and uh, some leadership skills. Very enlightening. And there is no I in team. There you go. So one other question. For your particular transition, what would you say was the hardest part for you, though? Like a part that you would, if you could, go back and redo. The hardest part for me was learning how to work through others. As a senior manager, I, I would walk through buildings that were the size of malls. 
And I wanted to change things instantly. I wanted to move a container. I wanted to make sure a truck was leaving on time. But learning the ability to work through others was so important. And, um, you know, you find out very quickly as you rise in management in, in any organization, you can't do everything yourself. And the willingness to let go and let others is, is a, a, a skill that I'm very glad that I learned. And there would be people at work for me that say I never really let go of everything, but you have to let go to a certain degree because you can't micromanage an organization that large. Um, so, shifting the topic, um, I know that you're um, on the Greenberg Town Council and are the leader of the Veterans Committee here. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the things that you enjoy doing in those fields? <laughs> well, um, as, the, uh, as a member of the Veterans Advisory Committee, it, it's my pleasure to serve the veterans of the town of Greenberg. The town of Greenberg is unique in that its commitment to our veterans is, is second to none. We're also fortunate that Congresswoman Nita Lowy, whose uh, district falls, uh, Greenberg falls under, is a staunch supporter of our veterans. Veterans deserve and have earned our thanks, and they have earned a wide range of programs and benefits. It's our job as the members of the Veterans Advisory Committee to make veterans aware of those benefits and to ensure that they maximize the opportunities that are there for them. And it's critical because a lot of our older veterans that were in World War II and Korea are in their late 80s and 90s, and there's a reluctance for them to reach out and grasp those programs. The second part that, that our group is focused in on is female veterans. Female veterans pose an entirely different range of problems to be solved and out of the traditional veterans organization base. And along with Nita Lowy and her staff, uh, the commitment to female veterans at Montrose and the VA hospitals is growing and it, it's a proud thing to be part of. So serving our veterans and making them aware of their programs and their opportunities is part of our, our basic goals. And how does it make you feel to know that you're helping many people? When you, when I just completed a major event for wounded warriors and um, I, I had an opportunity to host 45 families and one family said to me it provided them an opportunity to feel normal and if I have one family or one veteran that I've helped to feel normal, to get a benefit, the rewarding feeling that comes from that is, is, is just so exhilarating. It, it's just enlightening, and it, it, it just makes you want to do more. So I think helping others is, is a rewarding adventure for me. Sounds very rewarding. It definitely does. OK. How important was time management throughout your career path? Well, um, before I get into that segment, uh, I'd just like to say, uh, I may have misspoke earlier that I was a member of the Greenberg Town Board, and I'm not, and I'd like to stress that. Um, I'm a permanent member of the Bet Town of Greenberg Veterans Advisory Committee, and you know our town board does a fabulous job, and I wouldn't want them to get the feeling that I'm, I was an elected official anyway. Time <laughs> management is critical. Everything we do is on a clock. Everything. From the time I wake up in the morning to the time we go to bed at night. And how we manage our time is so critical. There's never enough time to do it right the first time, but there's always enough time to do it right a second time. So working through time management is, is so critical. One of the things that has become apparent in the last eight or nine years is that devices are driving our time. Mm -hmm. What, you know, the ability to sit down and complete a task uninterrupted without answering a phone, without answering an email, without answering a text, is now becoming a learned skill. So the first part of time management is to learn how to manage your environment, how to minimize interruptions, and how to complete a task completely through, from beginning to end, and then reviewing the task. But time management is critical. 
its courses uh, devoted to time management are, are not given frequent enough, and they certainly should be part of a management intern program. Okay. So <clears throat> you talked about communication, and you talked about working together. Now, how did that um, transition from college to the workplace, to the workforce? Like, what, were, what was the difference? What were the struggles that you encountered? Well, you know, when, when you're in a, a classroom environment in college, mm -hmm. you, you're submitting papers in a controlled environment. When you're communicating, uh, initially going into a workforce, you're communicating with the coworkers that are working with you. And that communication orally and verbally next to you is, uh, is pretty easy. As you grow in an organization, you have more and more reporting, people reporting to you, that communication is less and less oral and more and more written. And written skills are becoming uh, even more critical the further up in an organization you go. Uh, the, the ability, when I came out of the service and when I, uh, as an aircraft mechanic, almost all my writing skills and, and uh, understanding was in technical writing technical stats, understanding blueprints and plans. It took a, a while for me to transition taking uh, writing programs and effective writing programs to learn how to put words into a language, into a letter that, that didn't run off for 14 pages. People, and each day our employees would get a service talk. The service talk would last two to three minutes. It'd be going out to six, 7,000 employees. And we had to communicate the important matters of that day to our employees. And so learning how to communicate in writing successfully is critical. And uh, being able to communicate to a wide variety of people. When you're talking to people that have different uh, values or different expectations and different media, some people, uh, you know, we have people that are hearing impaired, so you're talking to a, a a sign interpreter. You have people that are using uh, media to, to communicate as we are today. And then you have people that are reading correspondence. So learning how to use different types of media is critical also. Okay. In our final segment, we'd like to thank you for being our first guest speaker. Thank you. Thank you. In closing, I'd just like to say that I think that the intern program is an excellent step for the people that have met the program. <laughs> We all uh, come to life with a certain amount of classroom experience. Taking that classroom experience and melding it successfully with life experience and the, the uh, opportunity to meet a diverse group of people as we have in the town, within the town uh, structure, the employees, the managers, uh, provides that ability to absorb life experience. So I, I wish you all continued success and I every confidence that in years to come, you're all going to be very successful managers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh.